Have you ever wondered how good the father of the chef, Del Curry, was? Well, truth be told, not as good as his son, the greatest shooter alive, but he sure was good. He was the Charlotte Hornets' all-time leading scorer with 9,839 points and also Charlotte's all-time leader in three-point field goals made with almost a thousand threes. That is, until Kemba Walker came along. But anyway, he is acknowledged also for contributing his shooting genes, which was upgraded in Chef Curry as the 2.0 version of Del Curry. An older edition of the Curry name that wore the number 30, but came off the bench mostly as a role player to provide instant offense and good three-point shooting, Del Curry played in the NBA for 16 years with five professional basketball teams winning the sixth man of the year once in 1994 with the Hornets, which is where he played most of his NBA games, contributing a very pivotal role. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the story of a man who these days we mostly catch glimpses of in Steph and Seth's games with a low-key personality cheering the young shooters on with proud nods and standing ovations. Though Del Curry currently seats with Eric Collins as a color commentator in the Charlotte Hornets television broadcast, he however used to stand and pace the NBA court as a 6 foot 5 inch shooting guard. He was born in Harrisonburg on June 25, 1964, but he was brought up in the incorporated town of Grotos where he grew up around four elder sisters. Dell's father was a very hard-working man who gave his garden his utmost attention, a garden Dell recalls as the biggest in their county. Dell quoted once about his father's influence. My father's work ethic and attention to detail strongly influenced my development as a person, an athlete, and eventually a father. His parents were also very interested in his love for basketball and only barely missed a few of his high school and college games. Dell's parents obviously taught him how to be an involved father, and we can see this how he brought up his children and how he continues to show up for them. Dell's parents also allowed him to be flexible with his interests and encouraged him tirelessly to be the best he could at whatever he chose. At Fort Defiance High School, Dell was keener about basketball than he was about books. Being a part of the high school basketball team, his coach let him use his barn on a daily basis for shooting practice, and as a result, he became their all-time leading scorer, winning a state championship in his wake. He, however, did flirt a little with the game of baseball, where he was even selected by the Texas Rangers in the 1982 Major League Baseball draft, especially after winning the championship. Anyway, Dell chose to go to Virginia Tech in Blacksburg and was a starter throughout his four years with the Hokies. Along with his teammates such as Bobby Preacher and Al Young, Dell, the Hokies, finished third in the National Invitation Tournament in 1984. During his senior year, Dell was awarded the Player of the Year in the Metro Conference for his amazing shooting during the 1986 season. But despite all his impressive finishes from long range, unfortunately the three-point line was not adopted in the NCAA until the following year in 1987. Nonetheless, the sharpshooter Del Curry is the second all-time scorer at Virginia Tech with 2,389 points and is also the all-time steals leader with 295. He was inducted into the Virginia Tech Hall of Fame in 1996. His college years were also highlighted by meeting his love interest, Sonia. Sonia was a volleyball player and her coach had invited him to one of her games. After the game, Dell had asked Sonia out on a date and the rest they say is history. It was in 1988 when they got married and also birthed the magician, Stephen Curry. This was two years after the Utah Jazz drafted him as the 15th overall pick in 1986. His time in Utah was short, however, as he only spent a single season there before being traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. In Ohio, he also only spent a season there before being provided for an expansion draft that saw him selected by the Charlotte Hornets, which was one of the two newest teams at the time. The expansion draft, Charlotte selected Del Curry from the Cleveland Cavaliers. In Charlotte, Dell played a huge part of the team, providing good three-point shooting to the Hornets offense, mostly off the bench, and was constantly in talk for the sixth man of the year, which he did finally get to win in the 1993-1994 season. He went on to play with the Hornets until 1998 before departing to Milwaukee for one year. 
Then finally, his last three seasons in the NBA was with the Toronto Raptors, but his longest time with any team was with the Hornets, where he still holds the second all-time leading scorer position with almost 10,000 points after averaging 14 points per game with 40.5% shooting from three-point range over the course of 10 NBA seasons. And guys, what's even more awesome is that he did this all while coming off the bench. Dell is deservedly a Hornets great, and lots of people are already clamoring for his jersey number to be retired, and I personally feel it has taken way too long. However, he is still honored by the team for his impact. Even his opinions on the team carry weight. When asked one time what he thinks of the new Hornets team in comparison to when he was still with the franchise, he had this to say. James Borrego and his staff did a wonderful job developing these guys and you can see the fruits of their labor. I think the player development is what's made this team really exciting to watch. He had also went on to praise LaMelo Ball, who already looks like he would share in the podium of greatness with Dell someday for the Hornets. I don't think anybody thought he would be this NBA ready. With the short training he had and the no summer league, he's been super exciting to watch. Moving on. Before Steph Curry came into the league to lead in three-point shooting, Dell had done it while he was in Milwaukee for the 1998-99 season, averaging an impressive 47.6% from three-point land. An impressive number for his time, which would also compete in arguably with the greatest shooters of this jump shooting era. Dell Curry's NBA career and general life with his family was underlined with a lot of movement following his various trades. But one of his movements in 1999 first helped us get a thirst of the prominence his kids would end up exhibiting. It was when the Currys moved to Toronto in the summer of 1999. Steph and Seth were still only kids, but were often seen shooting hoops with their father in Raptors practices. At this time, Stefan and his brother were already showing signs of tremendous shooting technique. They were knocking shots from way downtown and doing their best to compete with the NBA level talent when they weren't even five foot tall. Steph Curry, when his dad Dell played with Toronto, of course, Steph formed his NBA career, his early years in Toronto and actually. The shooting DNA has been successfully passed down. And guys, what really made Dell Curry so great was not just his effect in the NBA, but also his impeccable parental quality, which is also thanks to his wife, Sonia. Being athletes themselves, they both were the perfect role models for their kids. Dell had been coaching his kids to shoot right from when they could hold the ball. And when he was offered a job as the assistant coach of the Charlotte Bobcats in 2007, he stepped down even before the season could start because he said he wanted to attend his son's games. So cool. No wonder they call him an MVP dad. People might think his kids were privileged and easily had things come their way, but Dell claims his kids were far from favored and said they had to work for everything they enjoyed. As educators, there were chores to do at home, so there's stuff to do to earn the right to go to the games. We thought that kept them hungry. They understood that it was a privilege to be able to go watch NBA players play and practice. Dell's knowledge about his kids, how they play, and what they were capable of doing is so top-notch and a clear sign of a father who was genuinely interested in the growth, happiness, and success of his kids. One time he spoke of Curry's performance before a game saying, I check his movement, what his energy level is, his movements. I can tell early on how he's feeling. I told him if his energy stays where it's at right now, he's going to have a fabulous year. He moves so well, it's not wasted energy, he moves with a purpose. Can somebody just give Del Curry the Dad of the Century Award already? What are we waiting for? Anyway, when Seth and Steph played against each other in the 2019 Western Conference Finals, it was the first time two brothers ever faced off on such a big stage in NBA history. There was an absolute tension between their parents, but a friendly one. I normally don't get nervous at all, Dell said on their way to the arena for the playoff match between the Warriors and the Blazers in 2019. Playing 16 years in the league, I thought all my nerves were gone, but this has changed that. I'm nervous. Sonia wondered aloud how strained the postgame conversations might be when she said, you can't critique the other team because then you're critiquing one of your sons. The whole world is watching and critiquing about who we're favoring. We love the game too. We like being spectators. When I go to a game, I like to get into the game. But now I'm like, how do I get into the game when I'm trying to cheer for both teams? <laughs> 
The Currys are just so much fun, guys, and the Warriors coach Steve Kerr once perfectly termed them the royal family of the NBA. Dell loved when he played the game of basketball, but says it's a better feeling being a father and watching his sons play. It's a lot more joy. As a father, you're so proud, especially as an ex-player, knowing how hard it is to get to that level, to stay that consistent. Now he's the guy on the scouting report that everybody's trying to stop, and he's still able to do what he does. It's unbelievable, kind of surreal for your son to follow his father's footsteps, but to do it at the level he's been at? Yeah, I'm amazed just like everybody else when I watch him play. The father of the greatest shooter alive is not only impactful in the lives of his kids, his family, and even the NBA, but has also influenced his society, especially his hometown, Charlotte. He has a foundation, the Del Curry Foundation. It was founded in 1998, which has five learning centers offering drug abuse counseling and educational training programs for youth. Look guys, Del Curry didn't just make the fiercest three-point assassin in the NBA, he also has been influential in a great number of lives and sure deserves whatever honor he gets and probably even more. Anyway, if you want to see what Del Curry created, then click this video right here, where I go over 10 times that Stephen Curry absolutely humiliated NBA players in the playoffs. It's a dangerous video, guys, downright nasty, filled with everything Del taught to Steph, then showcased on the biggest stages in the NBA. Click the video, guys, watch it, enjoy it, and like always, I'll see you on the other side.